election. How's everyone doing out there today? Happy Sunday to you all. Um, I know this is what you have all been waiting for. It's um, another interesting day and it's going to be another interesting topic from your one and the only pastor, Pastor John Cadre. He is coming on today to feed you with the words of God. He's coming to feed you with the Holy Bible. Enjoy it. I want to keep a brief for me to see this in the moment. We were to be before the last book. We were able to come last Sunday. I was a guest. Hello, hello, Pastor John Cadre. Uh, yes. Pastor John Cadre, I think we might have to call you back. I think um, maybe it's due to the weather or network problem. Uh, the, the line is breaking, yes. The line is breaking. Let's call you back and yeah. start. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? That, that's what I'm saying. Um, the, the line is very, there's distortion. Um, so let's call you back and then let's start all over again, okay? I think it's the network problem. We are having a technical problem uh, with the network this afternoon. Let's uh, call you back again and see what happened with the network, okay? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do apologize about this. Um, we are going through a technical problem um, this afternoon, which is due to uh, signal or network in Nigeria. So let's do that again. I want to welcome everyone on this platform. I read you like the kingdom to this program, Moment with God. A counter with life. I want to trust God that the light of God will be shine in our heart this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to apologize for not being on grand last week. I sincerely apologize to the Smith fan on this radio. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a series that we're supposed to complete last week. I just go provide praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week, I was measuring the armor of God that we need to have. And the last one that time they permit me, that last week, time to permit me was the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Of course, in Psalm 107, the Bible said, He sent it to work and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. The word of God is a very important weapon against the enemy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, that completed the weapon within. Of course, you have the external weapons, you have the anointing oil, which is the medium for the Holy Spirit to. Move is a medium for this spirit to lead for them. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, the Bible says that on that day shall come to pass, that the body shall be lifted from your shoulder and removed from your neck. And by the anointing, the book shall be destroyed. So the anointing oil is a medium whereby the Holy Spirit works, removing body and lifting. Yoke, breaking yoke, lifting body and breaking yoke. So the threat calls us to confide upon us the spirit of conquest. The spirit of conquest. You know, in Psalm 
on the deny was not in great dark of the app. And David, my servant, and with very well, I am not ready. And he said, the enemy will know a fast point. So, he has a bit of request. Then, also, they have needed to buy the third sheet for us. Now, that is the time last night, I would say, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory from the right of the tongue. When the enemy shall come in like a spot, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up the sky that begins in. The Lord. Then, also, the last talk about the spirit is also an affirmation. In Acts chapter 13, verse 7 to 12, I will say that some folks may feel with the Holy Spirit. He turned to the man that was in the and said he could be come without fight. And it was so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of course, we have also the blood sprinkling. The Rashi chapter 9, verse 7 to 12, talks about the blood sprinkling. Is that because of the blood of the covenant? I will lift off the people from the pit where there's no water. I will point to the strong body to be snapped. Oh, today I care, I will give you double. The okay, and I was level to 12. Then he put 12 to the spot of the blood of spring and said, We have come from Zion to Jesus, this of the covenant, and the blood of spring and has been kept back in that economy. The blood of spring and praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now, today I want, especially want to talk about the psychology of warfare. The psychology of warfare or the mindset you take into battle. The psychology of warfare. By psychology, of course, I refer to the mentality or understanding. The understanding you need to have, the mentality you need to have when you want to, when you are face to face with the enemies, when you want to go into battle. When you want to have shift something great in your life, the mentality you must have. There's the mentality of a victor. And there's a mentality, mentality of a vanquish. There's a mentality of a winner, and there's a mentality of a loser. There was a time a great warrior led his troops to a distant land to fight that land. And they went back ship. As they got to the shores of the land that they want to contend with, he instructed his soldiers that they should burn down the ship. The ship that carried them through the sea to where they were, they came to, to fight. The soldiers were, were alarmed and they were surprised. That's the only means of, 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 of traveling, of escaping, or anything. So they had to do what the commander said. So they burned the ship. Now they asked, but why did you give this kind of command? Then he told his men, We have come to win and take this land, or we perish here. If we are born to give and take this land, or we perish here. So the soldier knew from the world go before they fired his first arrow that there's no need to wish them to run away. There's no retreat, no surrender. That the only thing, the only object for them is to win the battle. So, and the psychology, the mentality, they took into the world for change. No retreat, no surrender. Winning we both. Because the option, another option for winning is to perish. Praise the Lord. They won the battle. That tells you how the mentality, the psychology you go, you go into battle with is very important. So let's go over some of those mentalities. As a Christian, that we need to have. Number one, the supernatural startup mentality must have the supernatural startup mentality. If anyone in Christ is not a natural person, the supernatural. You are not terrestrial, then you are celestial. The real man is not the physical, but the spirit man. The real person, the real you, is not the body. It is the spirit in you. The physical being is not a child uh, it will go in one day, it will perish. It will be buried one day. It will decay. But the spirit man is a child, that spirit man that lives forever. That spirit man that will better 
live in a fight with God or live in fighting the devil in hell. You see, let me tell you, just like an astronaut, our body is a suit we need to engage to live on the earth successfully. Like astronauts need to wear the suit in the moon to walk upon the moon. They can't walk upon the moon with the moon with the physical body. So they have to wear a suit that conditions the body, they can they have the condition that can live on the moon. So our body is that suit that we need on death. You know, that spirit of death. In John chapter 15, verse 18 to 19, I was saying that, he said, if the world eats you, you know that it ate me for me to eat you. If you are of the world, the world we have not its own. And because they are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Praise the Lord. Don't say this, that you are not of this world. Now, why is that understanding of spirituality essential? Why is it essential to us in that school? Number one, our recognition is every. Now, anything that will address you must first look at you. The enemy that must first address you must first look at you. Every first two will try to success, even when you are dead in sin. And are quickened us together with Christ by grace in our sin. And are grace us all together and made us sit together in every place in Christ Jesus. We are seated with Christ in every place. We are still in Christ. So, in every way we are seated, the enemy cannot access it. The devil has been thrown down to the head. He doesn't have any access to him again. So, when you know that your spirituality, your spiritual life, makes you to sit with Christ in every place, that means the enemy cannot reach where you are again. There was a time I was having this uh, swimming. I was just going to the toilet. And at the time, I got tired of it. I said, I think I know, I, I have to get something. And the Spirit said to me, He said, Did I tell you I'm not eating? I said, I'm sorry. The other guy had to be saying that after about two or two days or so. Then, if I had this picture to my heart, that you are not living on this earth, you are not this earth, you are still Christ, the Christ in every place. And I begin to proclaim that father, I said, oh, this sick death, or whatever is called, this is this. I'm not on this earth, where the spirit, you are not on this, I mean, everywhere the spirit and this can reach. So, I'm not very carry, I've changed my education. I didn't know that was the last time I need to go to toilet, confined at the last uh, at, at that time. Law. Again, as what is called popular yard problem because of spirituality. Richard Tetsky says, For ye are dead, I don't like to eat the Christ in God. So, anyone that wants to get you, has to get God first. And after getting God, has to bring out Christ from God. Then, if you ask for Christ, you have to double the yard problem. Praise God. Now, number two, there is mentality of a superpower. You must have a mentality of a superpower that as a Christian, you have a superpower. In Psalm 56, verse 9, Psalm 56, verse 9, that when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies come back. This I know for God is for me. Praise the Lord. He said, every child that is not get into trouble outside, he runs home. Then it ends with the attacker. If you have, if they point you to where, follow me. He knows, if his name is there, he knows when he gets his father's house, somebody will be there to take that bit out. So he tells you, follow me, I will beat you, follow me. He has been running to his father's house. We have a super backup. And this story about God's war, a pilot of America was shot down. The go for. And now they will have to look for him. And when they calculated all the equipment, armament that was put together to rescue that small pilot, 
they cost it to be six billion dollars for one man. Six billion dollars. All the equipment, all the armaments, all the gadgets that were used to rescue him. And when they got him, they tell him, Will you afraid for your life? He said, No. Then I did know they will come for me. That's what we talk about back up. That when you are in battle, you are sure that your back is cut out. There was a story about Pastor Adeboy of Within Church. He went to a village. And uh, here are uh, men, you know, uh, people in cults. The, 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 the one that is the leader was a very good man. Then, at the time when he was preaching, he looked all of them straight in his eyes. He said, the number of my car is so so so. I'll be going from here to this other place before we return for the evening service. If you are so powerful, cause my help to return. So have an accident. They looked at him. The owner looked intensely at him. And after a while, good man came out to give his life to Christ. Later, they went to visit the old man. They asked, Why did you give your life to Christ? He said, mm-hmm. He said, When this, a small boy like this is challenging people like us, then you should know that it is not him, it. it is at the back of that is giving covenant. Praise the Lord. That's what we talk about back up. The man is it's not afraid of back up, but he's afraid of his back up. He's God. Praise the Lord. So we have a very mighty back up that the enemy is scared of. He said, when I cry, my enemy shall come back. This I know for God is for me. Praise the Lord. For the time I had a one terrible dream that the Lord has invaded our house. I was seeing a young man living with my spirit, and my brother and the wife were, were around. Yeah, I had a dream. And I I got up, I went to pray. I prayed. At the point in time, God showed me a vision. I saw the 10th president, Mosai Aradura. And God said, he said, I will come. And I said, God, we are talking about me seeing I'm Robert and this place. And you are showing me Aradura. He said, I'm sure you are that because whenever the president goes, the security team goes with him. So they can handle any kind of project around him. So I'm showing that as your president, no matter what comes around you, I will come. And when I come, my team, my security, my angels will come around me and they will silence every thing that comes to the angel. So I went to bed to sleep. And around 12 a.m., there was a cry from where my, my, my brother and wife were living. There was a cry. I ran out, took my anointing and ran into the room. She was, my brother's wife was gasping for breath. She was going, gasping. She couldn't breathe, gasping, going. Anointed her. And that killed the enemy. Praise the Lord. It is, the, it is God that says, No, what the Lord, what do you know that yourself? When the enemy comes, me too, I will come. And when I come, everything will be taken care of. I'm sure. And everything was taken care of. Praise the Lord. Let me go on. The mentality must have. My battle is God's battle. Praise the Lord. My battle is God's battle. It's not your battle. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. That God shall fight for you and shall hold your peace. Remember, we are I already doing that kingdom. <laughs> the student lines are plus four four seven nine three one seven eight four eight six. Then plus two three four 
9024553788. WhatsApp calls only to get a customer before I round up this week. Praise Lord. So, hey, I have the mentality that your battle is God's battle. In first I'm Mr. 36 to uh five. David was telling so he said, I kill lion. I've killed bear. And this listing will be what we have. Because he has defied the I will defy the armies of the living God. That means David successfully shifted the, the battle from himself and stood forth. He, he has no problem. The problem he has is it's with God. He defies the army of God. The Lord. Mm -hmm. There's nothing important about God. There's nothing important. It's only you have to put in what we put in that matters. It's our first part of our that in God we put all the day of and praise the name forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as we are running up, Number four, only God is one of my friends. Only God, that's that, 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 only God is one of my friends. In Jeremy chapter 20, verse 8, Bible says that, and the officer shall speak for the hungry people, and they shall see, the old man is there, they are faithful, and faith are there. Let him go, and return unto his house. Let the burden have faith as well as his heart. If you go into battle with the enemy, with fear, you have lost the battle. You have lost the battle. Because in the Bible, that when they have gathered people for fight to go to war, because they you will ask them who is afraid, who is fearful. Let that person go back to home. Because that person will corrupt everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's what we are talking about. You have to have that mentality that the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. It is of the Lord. Who are you? You have no capacity against the enemy. Because you have God. Anytime God will step in. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. And let us take this chapter 20. Let us take this chapter 20. Now, let us take the battle between the children of Israel and the enemies. And the God told them it's going to fight. That's how they said, 20 something, 7 goes to 20 something. You shall not need to fight in this battle. And if it, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, oh, do that. And Jesus said, Get not, not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Bible says in verse 20, And they rose against the mountain and went forth into the wilderness of Tequa. And as they went forth, Joseph said, Hear me, O oh, in the name of Jesus. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. I believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. And when they have consulted me, they appointed singers unto the Lord, and to, to sing that should praise the beauty of his holiness, as they went out before the army, and to sing, praise the Lord for his mercy and grace forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent a bushman against the strength armor, Akuma and Mosea, which were come against Judah, and were smitten. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The enemy of Judah, they destroyed themselves. He destroyed himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what we are talking about. Anytime an issue is being brought before me, I knew I'm not the one to contact with. It's God himself. So I call upon him to show up. And he always show up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From today, God will always show up for you. Amen. Anytime. The attacker comes. Anytime the enemy comes against you, the Lord that you serve will show up for you in the mighty Jesus. Amen. But if you don't know the Lord as the Lord and Savior, 
you must know him. Because he can only stand for you when you are with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Until we meet next week, continue to win every battle against the enemy. Continue to be victorious. And your hand this year with the song of the in the mighty of Jesus. So, for all the people on the IRA, once again, I welcome this for month of August. This month shall be the month in the in the mighty of Jesus. God shall be with you. Until we meet last next week, be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to the words of God from Pastor John Cadre, live from Ibadan, Nigeria. Uh, remember, Pastor John Cadre is always here every Sunday. So each and every Sunday uh, from 1 p.m. till 1.30 uh, in the afternoon. That's if you live in United Kingdom. And in Nigeria, it's going to be the same time. For now, it's going to be the same time from 1 p.m. in Nigeria and uh, till 1.30 p.m. in Nigeria. So Nigeria and United Kingdom, we're using the same time at the moment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the words of God from Pastor John Cadre right here on AYO Radio UK. Yeah, let me send a big shout out to all our listeners uh, of the Gospel Show today. Um, Adeyemo Yayo. Thank you so much. Jomi Komon. Thank you. Oh, number one DJ in Nigeria right now, DJ Shino, Shino King. Yes, so, yes, so is the master. Yes, man is making money. Trust me. Okay, let me see if I can actually bring him to the camera and talk to him today. Just about the business, um, DJ business in Nigeria. How is it going? And, um, you know, what is the hope for? UK based uh, Nigeria DJs. So, like for example, if I come to Nigeria, how much will I get paid to DJ at an event and all other of my colleagues? Ali Zalad, all time my friend. Yep. Fidel, Fidel Lima Umeo, thank you so much. And our one and only friend, my friend. Proud to say, my friend, my mic. Who am I? Yeah. Dean Joseph, hold tight. How's your Sunday going? Femi Anthony, Bolaji Akinpelu Daniels, everyone. How are you? Well, we've just come to the end of the show. Uh, I'm just going to talk for like 10 minutes. And uh, obviously, this has got nothing to do with gospel. It's just about. Um, Africa mentality. That's why I, I want to call it Africa mentality. You understand? Uh, the things that we do that I believe that we need to change. You understand? I am not coming here to tell you that, yes, Western culture is the best, but I will tell you that if you go to, if you live in Rome, do like Romans, but obviously there are some other stuff or tradition in room that you can filter you understand so i'm not saying do everything about western culture or everything you see in the west but at least pick the best from the west yes pick the best from the west like for example you know people still in nigeria people robbing nigeria and then jungle justice i am totally utterly against jungle justice in any part of African nation, including the Caribbean, because they do it over there as well. You know, let the uh, court um, decide. Take anyone that's committed any crime, take them to the police, and let the court, you know, pass the judgment. You must not kill anybody that's offended anyone in Africa, it is not right. It's barbaric, you understand? Um, and I have to remind people, if you kill someone just because they've done something, 
Um, trust me, you will go for capital punishment when, you know, the law gets you. I'm telling you the truth, okay? Um, the reason I'm actually talking about this is just because of the two videos that uh, became viral on social media recently where a pastor was actually caught, you know, um, having an affair with a church member. You understand? Uh, I have to make this story very clear to everyone. The pastor, the pastor's wife, find out about the affair of her husband, well, man of God. So she chucked him out of the house. So now the pastor went to stay with um, uh, a church member who happened to be a female, understand? And this female, she's got children. I think, if I'm not mistaken, she's got three children already with a man. And her husband, this woman's husband, lives abroad. I don't think you heard me. Let me say that again. A pastor was caught by his wife having illicit affair or extra, you know, extra marital affair by his wife and she chucked him out of the house. You will say, oh, this is kind of very rare in Nigeria because a man is always the head of the house. Even when a man uh, commits adultery, he still stays in the house. He, he'll probably chuck out the innocent wife out. But as the story goes, the man was kicked out of the house. So he went to um, Scott, I use the word Scott, with a church member who happened to be a female mother of three, if I'm accurate about the, the children she's got. Anyway, so this female church member actually has a, hu a husband who lives abroad. So that's another issue there. We that will live abroad and we leave our wives back home. A long distance relationship, in my own view, it might work for a certain time, but I don't think it's gonna work forever. One of our presenters actually talked about it and I'm not against it, she's totally wrong. Right, she's totally right about um, um, our views. You know, but I'm just looking at um, an incident that occurred. So that's what I'm using to do. So the wife uh, lives in Nigeria with three children. The husband uh, lives abroad, obviously, by himself, leaving the family behind at home. So this pastor seek refuge in the house. So according to the story by Niger Block, um, this woman was pregnant for this pastor. In fact, several times she's been pregnant according to the story, but the pastor kept advising her to abort it. Maybe it wasn't even the pastor, maybe they both agreed that they don't want a child with each other because obviously the woman is married and here's a pastor who is also married but has been kicked out of the house. But anyway, According to the story, she's done um, a few abortions for this pastor. So, but the last one obviously took her life. So she died out of this uh, abortion, the last abortion she did. So now the community now gather. Now they thought it was the man, the pastor that actually killed the woman. Nobody is doubting that the woman had an abortion and she died as a process of it. But now the pastor became a victim in the community. So he was beaten, molested, um, shirt taken off, slapped, blah, 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 assaulted in so many ways. In some areas, you know, they will have killed him. You understand? But thank God that they are so... Uh, many, many nice people or God-fearing, if you like, people around who saved his life. So they decided to take him to the police station. But the point I'm making is 
Why was he beating? He didn't kill her. It was there through the abortion. You understand? They killed, I mean, they nearly killed this man through beating. Slap. Look at my face. See how fresh it is. Yeah? If anybody slapped me once, I would pass out. Because it's been, since I've been in the UK for more than, well, approximately 40 years in the UK, no one has ever slapped this face before. You understand? So if I'm receiving um, a slap on my face at this age, I'll probably pass out. So it puts people like me under pressure that when you go to Nigeria, don't do something wrong. You understand? Because there are crazy people out there. Now, let me quickly move to that. I mean, move on. Um, I wonder, what do you think the place will now do to this pastor? You understand? In my own view, there's no case unless if the pastor actually gave this woman some concussion to actually drink, to abort the pregnancy. That is where uh, a case might, you know, ensue. But if this woman normally go to the hospital and have an abortion, it's got nothing to do. This is my own view and I don't have any legal uh, background, you understand? But it's just my way of thinking about life and how, about how the court might see it or should see it, you understand? And it doesn't mean that I'm right, you understand? I'm not always right in most cases, you understand? I'm sure my children can tell you that. <laughs> Love aloud, <laughs> LOL, you understand? So. Why is it that when a crime is committed in Africa and Caribbean, you understand, the next thing is jungle justice. Why do we think like that? We do not have that in this country. Any civilized nation around the world will not practice this. Why is it that we've done it in the past and some people are still continuing continue to do it. What is the motivation? Is it illiteracy or is it not? Because I cannot see anyone that's a illiterate person that will go and beat another human being to pop, to death. I cannot see any some anyone that is educated up here you understand? Some people are educated, they've been to university, but they're still living like thugs, like hooligans, like idiots. You understand? But if you're pop properly educated, education will teach you a lot about life. It, it will actually teach you about the law of the land, uh, the norm in society. And no society in this world will accept uh, jungle justice. You understand? Is the is the is the the job of the law? Is the job of the court? Is the job of the police forces? Why did we used to do it? Why are we still doing it? Even let's just um, let's admit that okay, we've done it in the past. We are guilty. Now let's move on. This is twenty first century. Why do we still do jungle justice? In Africa, I'm going to be adding people to uh, actually contribute and come on. Uh, if you have uh, a few of a data and you want to contribute, I'm not going to be long because uh, my time is my time is actually up now. Um, so, but why? The second video that is going viral uh, on social media is. Uh, I talked about this last time, and I'm still going to say it until uh, people are actually listening to me. You understand? Because I do have passion in all these areas. I love it. You understand? If I've got money, I would like to change the way things are done in Africa and Caribbean countries. Uh, actually, let's just say third world countries. You get me? The second one is... People in, um, some people, maybe not all, but I'm sure the percentage is very large. 
in Africa and all other third world countries, I don't think they actually understand mental issue uh, problem, that people do have mental issues. I do not think they understand that. Um, I, maybe they are aware of it, or they are just being ignorant. You understand? So, um, about the video, this video I'm going to quickly talk about, uh, because I don't want to take too much of your time, especially on Sunday, when some people will be going to church and some people will be going to Asalatu. You understand? I think Asalatu should be closed by now, or if it's still on, but I'm missing something. Yeah. The, 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 the second video is um, where a man, a man was actually watching, washing, washing, let me use the word washing. Uh, a man was washing his clothes, right? He's taking his shirt off. He's only wearing a wrapper, and he actually took the bucket right to the middle of the road, and the man was washing his clothes. So um, I think a friend of mine is actually right uh, waiting outside the studio. I think it should be an opportunity to actually invite him to actually come on the program. So please, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. Keep it locked on AYO Radio UK. I'm just going to open the studio door and then uh, get him to actually come in and share his view on this topic. Um, I can tell you, he also studied journalism, even though he's not practicing it, but he's got that background in journalism. So um, unknown to him is actually coming here to cut his hair. So, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna bring him, you can, you can hear him, he's knocking on the door now. He hasn't got patience at all. Oh God. Where? I'm gonna make him take her easy now. Make him have patience now. So, just hold on him. Bless me with money, bless me with money. Lady Mary, bless me with money. Lady Mary, bless me with money. You are not about bless me. You do not have to Thank you for tuning in to listening to AYO UK Radio, a station with Paris. A cab of serial to nature trait with me and Babs from AYO UK Radio, a station with Paris. Okay, welcome back. It's, um, um, I think it's 147 or 149 um, London time at the moment. So the heat is still on. Um, it's AYO Radio. Sorry, I'm running late. The program is late today. And unfortunately, we have to do it sharply, sharply. And uh, just get straight to the uh to the bottom of this come over here sir i want to introduce one man good friend of mine is uh, uh, he studied journalism he is saying no but i'm going to bring him in wherever wherever because he's an intelligent person he's just going to be 10 minutes sir please sir um i know you have passion in this topic that's please please uh show that, that please come please i've told everyone that you are actually knocking on the door and I want them to actually see you and contribute to your, this issue. Uh, Shalada Da studied uh, journal, journal, journalism. Yeah. Mm, how many years ago, sir? God knows. Uh, donkeys, yes. Donkeys, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, it's just going to be 10 minutes. Uh, the time is 13.50. Uh, We're going to finish. It. What's this topic about, please? Quick, sharply, sharply. We'll, I will hit it in the mail. Um, I will hit the nail at the bottom. 
Did it on the head. Hey! Yeah. You both pay, pay, pay respect. I told you he's a journalist. You will, you will hear the way he talks. It's totally different from mine because me, I'm, I'm a street journalist. You understand? Yeah. Shout out to, oh, DJ Captain D. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh -huh. We have two videos that has gone viral. They yeah. have gone viral on social media nowadays. The first one is about a pastor who the wife actually found out that he was having an affair. Yeah? Right. So the wife kicked him out of the house. Right? Yeah. So now the pastor went to the word I would like to use is uh, Scott with a church member who happened to be a wife and a mother of three children, but the husband lives abroad. Are you following me? I'm or trying to. Do. Okay. Yeah. Man, a pastor having an affair. Yeah. Got caught. Mm -hmm. Wife kicked him out. Now he's gonna know he became homeless. Now he's caught him with um um a, a woman who happened to be a, a wife. A married woman. A married woman. Yeah. But the wife, the husband lives abroad. Yeah. But she's got three children live, living with him. Mm -hmm. Right? So the issue was the man, the pastor, encouraged, or both of them agreed to have abortion. You know, obviously they were having sexual okay. sexual relationship. So they obviously this pastor is not Catholic. I don't know what <laughs> denomination is. In which case, abortion will not have been uh, uh, Exactly. Well. So that's a good point there as well. Cherubu and Sarah, for maybe they will allow okay. that or Celestia or uh, <laughs> Baptist. <laughs> Are you Catholic? Um, Background wise? I'm everything. Yeah, everything. Okay. I don't discriminate. We all have one God. So. Okay. That's beautiful. Are you talking political or are you just... I'm talking everything. Well, you are just introducing <laughs> me to the, the same, so I don't know. You know. Okay. Um, what's the question? Okay. Now, um, they both agreed not to have children with each other, obviously, because of the circumstances surrounding uh, the yeah. affair. Yeah. One, the wife is married, the husband lives abroad, uh, the pastor has just been kicked out of the house, and this this woman is having an affair with. Uh, she's a uh, uh, she's a member of his church. Yeah. So there's a big secrecy going on there. Uh, so obviously they can't have children together. Yeah. You following? So they both agree to have abortions. Yeah. According to the story, they've had several abortions. Yeah, but this last one went wrong, in which the woman died wow. in the course of this abortion. Yeah. Right. Now, the whole community gathered together, cash the pastor. Mm. Now, he's, it became uh, a criminal. Yeah, he was uh, held responsible. He was held responsible. <clears throat> now, jungle justice was done on, but unfortunately, a good Samaritan saved his life. Yeah. While it was Where was this thing happening? It was happening in the um, um, eastern part of Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. So I can't tell you precisely, but yeah. he both sides. Yeah. No wonder it happened as jungle justice. But it can uh, happen in Lagos too. No, no, no. It doesn't it have... I oh, don't, come no, on, man. We're going to argue. I don't want to argue, no, argue no, no, with no, you. Please, You're please. intelligent No, man. I'm not saying... Because it happened in Ebola, land, that is why jungle justice... No, I'm not saying that. Okay, what you Because saying? it happened in Nigeria. That's what I'm saying to you now. It does happen in the Caribbean. If, like no, it. if it happened in the Western world, you know, it's a very different ball game. So yeah. that's what I'm just trying to clarify. Okay. Okay. I don't mean, but because it happened in Ebola, then mm. it, it can't happen anywhere else in Nigeria. Of course it can okay. happen. Now, yeah. a good Samaritan saved his life while yeah. he was being leashed. Yeah. And took him to the PlayStation. Yeah. So now, you've had your story. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Let's make it snappy. I'm running. First of all, um, those who parade themselves, I don't know what the Bible says clearly, but uh, I think Jesus Christ... Are we Christ following said, the Bible no, or wait a are we no, I'm looking the at law the, of the I'm land. looking at the whole picture now. Okay. A I don't want people, us to no, hide no, no. behind the Bible. No, no, no. I'm just saying, mm. a lot of people, you introduced me, this man to me as um, a, a man of God. Mm. 
So even in the Bible, it says that uh, not those, not all those who call me uh, um, Lord. Yeah, exactly. You know, shall say the kingdom of uh, a lot of people parade themselves as whatever. Mm. Uh, that is why, for me, I don't regard these people as a uh, uh, man of God. Um, uh, this uh, supposed pastor, obviously, he has his needs. Mm. I don't know how much his wife was uh, giving him when. Uh, uh, for but him to start the, looking elsewhere. Okay, yeah. So he's now gone into a place where he's gone to meet a woman whose husband is not there. Mm. How can you marry somebody and you are not there? And you live in Western world. Exactly. Um, so obviously, uh, we don't know how much he himself is doing. So we take away the short issue. We just look at the need that they have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, when it comes to now, is this, this scenario where the... Uh, the the uh, two concerning adults. Mm -hmm. You have the, the the woman that passed away, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and the um, the supposed pastor, whatever you want to call a man of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, they both agree to to be in that relationship, mm -hmm. and then they agree that whenever anything happens, mm -hmm. whether they, they they use a, a, a preventing mechanism or not, they decided mm -hmm. not to anyway. Mm -hmm. So obviously they consent in there. And of course, when the repercussion of the issue came up, mm -hmm. they also consented to uh, sort it out, yes. you know, not yeah. go ahead with, yeah. the, with the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like you said, it has happened not once, not twice. Mm -hmm. It's happened a series of times, yes, but this now went wrong. He cannot be held responsible, I'm afraid. Uh, it should be taken, the situation should be handled by, uh, in the normal way, a uh, court of law, uh, in which he will be exonerated. Yes. Will be found so this more is guilty. Right, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. But why is it that when situation happens like that in um, third world countries, the first thing that come to the minds of people is to leash, to beat somebody? That's because they are level. You see, we we justice doesn't prevail in Africa. I'm afraid, or in third world country as a whole, because the rule of law. That is why our even our social economic life is in the, the state that it is, political, social, and economic, mm -hmm. is in the state that it is. Because how can justice prevail and people believe in justice when uh, you have some politicians who parade themselves as politicians? I personally believe they harm robbers anyway. Uh, they came abroad, well, I mean, went to uh, our countries, um, found themselves in power, maybe they bought the political position, and then loot the money that belonged to all. Mm -hmm. uh, they were found guilty, not in Nigeria, found guilty elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then they found their way back to Nigeria mm -hmm. and that people are celebrating them. Where, you know, if they couldn't get justice for those people in, in, in Nigeria. They came abroad where justice prevailed there. They were jailed mm -hmm. uh, for, for looting the country. And then they went back to Nigeria where you would think that they would be held as well mm -hmm. and face justice. But no. They were celebrated. Yeah. So this tells you the level of uh, our understanding of what law should be or what you or, or our belief in the in the in the law. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people take the law into their own hands and they introduce what they call good justice, as you have described it. Mm. Okay, let's move away from that in two minutes because we are running off now. Um, uh, the second video that's gone viral is, and I want you to think with me as I'm narrating the story. I'm not a good uh, orator, uh, so I, don't, I can't tell good stories to make anyone laugh. But the fact is a man was seen in the middle of traffic. I'm looking at two-way traffic here. Yeah? yeah. On a very, very busy road with a bucket filled with water, soap, and his clothes. Yeah. He was wearing wrapper. Yeah. Not wearing any top. So bare chested. Yeah. Chested. And he was washing his clothes in the middle of the road. Look at that scene. Place yourself at the scene now. What will be coming out from your head? What will you be thinking of this man? The man himself, obviously, is insane. If you were normal, you won't put yourself at risk. Um, okay, a normal person, uh, if you want to bathe, 
<laughs> or you go right into the bathroom, bathroom and do your business. And shut your door. Exactly. Mm. Do you whatever business you want to do. They are putting music on, dance, laugh, and have a good shower and scrub yourself and come out. Mm. But uh, if you put yourself in the middle of the road uh, to do that, either you are... He wasn't insane. having a shower. He was washing his clothes. He's washing his clothes? Mm. Well, is that the right place to wash clothes? No. You go to the laundrette and wash your clothes or get a washing machine and wash it. And if you don't have those uh, um, mechanisms, you use... You wash with your bucket in a safe place, not in the middle of the road. I mean, what message was he trying to send? Obviously, this man is mad. He could not be with his right sense to be doing that where he, there is appropriate place for different things. Mm. You wouldn't go to uh, a, a, a church and start, uh, uh, you know, doing silly things there. Mm. There is appropriate place for different things. Mm. Over one million people who actually saw this video would think right now that you are the one who is insane. Yeah. Because the comments they were they were leaving by the comments they were saying he's doing ritual. Yeah. They said it's ritual. Mm. Um but nobody was actually saying that the man could be possessed. He That's could because, have a mental health that issue. is because I remember when I first came to this part of the world. Mm. The um, uh, the way I look at the, the the people here, I just I thought everybody was mad because of the way they behave. Um, I give now, such an example of uh, uh, what you well, saw or what you will see it, in England that you would think people are insane. Um, first of all, I saw some people that were punk. They chose to dress in appropriate way with tattered with ta well with tattered clothes and all that. And back home in those days, if you wore tattered clothes or uh, torn jeans, uh, of course it's a I'm sign of insanity. Jeans, but we now have a situation Am I where, crazy? of course, you're mad. I still think Jesus. you are. <laughs> I still think you but are. Just call me but it has, now, it has now become fashionable, even in Africa, where you will see some so-called reasonable people will be wearing uh, torn clothing. You know, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Torn clothing is used, is bad, it's not good. Anyway, that leaves that story apart. Uh, we're now living in the part of the world in Nigeria where uh, uh, ritual, because of poverty, uh, Rishwa uh, trying to make money quickly has taken precedence in people's lives. So the way of, uh, in which people think is totally different from the way I think, I'm afraid, because I don't live there. So I'm not inclined to think that the man is not mad, but he's making Rishwa. Why, why, is, why are people not thinking the way you're thinking? Because they live in an environment where they are conditioned to think that way. You know, they just straight away think he's not mad, he's just trying to make money, he's doing ritual. That's because money rules people now. You know, people are in need of money, they're living in abject poverty. I'm afraid no insult is intended, but that is just the way it is, I'm afraid. Okay, to round up the program, um, what would you advise people, uh, uh, people in uh, third world countries in terms of the way we're thinking in the 21st century, because um, I believe I will actually say, is it actually as uh, is it part of illiteracy, or even literate people can also think like that? Because I will personally, I I won't say I'm educated. Obviously, I'm educated to a certain level, yeah. but I will not go and leech a man. I will not go and kill a man because I know if I do it. The, the law, you understand, I will be done for it in the course of, course. of law. Because and you I know live... murder. Okay? <laughs> you probably in the UK, they will sentence you to life or manslaughter five years. But in Nigeria or in Africa, if you kill someone, you'll be killed. Yeah. Um, the, the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I personally believe what we need a really good government that will address the issue of justice in our society. When a good justice is in place, and I'm talking about justice that is not compromised, mm -hmm. when there is a good justice system is in place, where uh, uh, I heard from someone that we actually have one of the best human rights law in the world. But the we practice are in, Nigeria. in Nigeria or in most African countries, but uh, <laughs> no, that is true. But the that trouble is not is, true. How could is, that be true, true when we're witnessing all these things? This thing, 
please, let me land. You have a situation where you may have all the best rules or whatever. I'm not going to see implement... how you make that statement. No, no, no I'm because just it is true. It. In, in writing. We have the best justice system. In writing. And the only problem we now have is the implementation of that rule that is there. We have rule that is compromised. You must listen carefully to what I just said. Having one rule is one thing. The implementation of that rule is another. You have a situation where in Singapore... Yeah, but does, just it, have, one second, does it not have to be a combination no, of everything? No, no, just implementation one second. And just one, in of place. course, just one second, please. In this part no, of the I world, just find it very, No, no, no. I'm just trying to round it up quickly, okay. like you said. Please do. We have rule of law here in the United Kingdom. Mm. And uh, we have rule of law in Singapore. Mm -hmm. You have rule of law during the time of the 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 the, the man who made the economy great, the father of the uh, of the current uh, uh, man who died recently. You have a situation where in this part of the world they say to you, "Don't litter the street." Of course, mm -hmm. in this part of the world, if you litter the street, uh, if you are caught, you wait for if you are caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know you shouldn't do it, mm -hmm. but people still do it. Mm -hmm. They throw paper out of the window of their cars. Mm -hmm. That is the level of where the application of the rule of law uh, uh, stands in the part of the world. Mm -hmm. So you are afraid to some extent. Mm -hmm. But believe me, my brother, if you live in Singapore, mm -hmm. you will not even try because you know if you are caught, you are in serious trouble. So there are streets in Singapore. That rule of law mm -hmm. exists is even stronger there than it does here. So that is just my take on it. You have the best law in Africa, but uh, is it well implemented? So in again, my question is, we should pray to have a government which will look after the justice system and address the issue of the justice system so people get justice. When there is justice, people won't lynch. They will know that the law will take its course. Thank can you there, very much. Can there ever be that government? Of course. Okay. When we have people like you and me thinking, and if people in Africa want people like us to come and help them, because it's still part of our our nations, mm -hmm. we are all we are we are probably more patriotic Ooh, than if, the people if that Buhari live there. can't do it, who else can do it? It's people like, like I just told you, people, people like, like you, us. people like you and me can do it. Because the way of our thinking, I'm, I'm afraid we would probably bring people. You will be corrupted. People, no, 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 no. We, we are incorruptible. Finished. No, no, no. We are incorruptible because why? Why are you? I'm what, sure many people you, have said I'm, what you're saying no, no, before they get to no, power. Because there's and the different. power just changed. No, no, no. Because we are different. Because what are they going to entice me with? I'm sorry to say, I'm not being arrogant. Money. But money? How much money are you going to what entice about the me system with? As well? No, no, no. The system will they not can just them. call you. Ah, Mister Dada. Yeah. Listen, you are in Nigeria now. This is how we do things. No, so but and I you will tell last you, to uh, how you do things doesn't mean I have to follow you. So if you get somebody like myself who is very determined to change things, it can be done. You'll get rid of it. Well, they have not got rid of uh, Mister Ambody in Lagos. He's doing something. Things are changing. We can see it right from here. Is it not corrupted? I'm not too in sure. Level, I don't know. In any way. I don't know in so, how much corruption, because there are levels of corruption, and I believe that there are some people... So you are advocating corrupt. for corruption? No, I am not. You but I'm just, it's okay. No, I am just just, uh, to a certain no, 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 level. No, I am just telling you, Can't but you when have... somebody is determined to do things, yes, they can do it. And Mr. Ambody is changing things in Lagos. I'm not promoting him, and I'm not selling him. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just talking from what I have seen, what he has done, development that has been brought to Lagos, just using internet generated revenue. Everybody will testify to that. I have seen it. This is not something I have not seen. I have seen it. I've is seen it not the evidence. Tinubu boy? Sorry? Is it not Tinubu boy? Well, call him Tinubu boy, call him uh, fa Fashola boy or whoever. The fact of the matter is you have stable government who are doing things, and everybody could see it. Apabio did feel in, in, in uh, where he was, Akwa mm -hmm. yeah? And me, myself, I see things that he did. Well, it just tells you, even within Nigeria or in our countries in the whole uh, African continent, mm -hmm. we have people who, if, you are, if they are determined to do things, mm -hmm. they can do it. So change can, can happen. Thank okay? you very much. You're uh, welcome. This comes to you. Um, uh, we are going to be rounding up now. Uh, we've actually exceeded our time. Uh, we do apologize about that. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, thanks to my honorable gentleman and a good friend as well. 
Mr. Shola, that uh, he's got very, very strong uh, interest and or passion, rather, you have plus passion for politics and uh, better Nigeria. Uh, like I say, you could tell by the way he spoke. He studied journalism in the UK. And uh, obviously, somebody, one of the people that I look up to, and it's a pleasure that he's actually in the studio with me this afternoon, Sunday afternoon. So, we are going to shop Amala today. So, please, ladies and gentlemen, go and shop Amala, promote the Amala now. <laughs> Amala is good for you. Okay, that's the end of the program. Thank you so much to everyone. Thanks to Pastor John Cadre uh, for the lovely program today. And um, additional thanks to all our crew. Please go to um, AYO Radio UK on Instagram and start voting for the best radio presenter of the year. And start voting for the best radio show on AYO Radio. And start voting for the best manager on AYO Radio Station UK. So thank you so much, everyone. You have a lovely day. You see, my friend, my friend has got OCD. I wish I could just turn the camera around. He's got OCD. He's in the studio this morning and he just saw um, spider web. Spider web. And he went to the kitchen or bathroom, wherever he got the mop from, and he's just killing. He's got OCD. He doesn't like dirt. Trust me. Me, I love dirt. Me and dirt. We live together. We are best friends. We went to school. Uh, let me quickly send a big shout out to everyone that's just joining us before I sign off. JS Bright, hold tight, big up, yeah. And um and and uh, 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 is that Anjejo Alatishe? Captain D Donava, he says, have a blessed, blessed Sunday. Yes, sir. Yele Makinwa, hold tight. The Vector events. Hold tight. Oh my God, my Nollywood actress. She's actually watching us. Uh, Nollywood actress and a producer, film producer, uh, Abiola Tilewa. She's actually watching us live on Instagram. Thank you so much, my sister. I really appreciate that. Wow, to have celebrity watching you. That is big, man. I'm excited. I feel like break dancing. And also right here on uh, Facebook Live, uh, I've sent my big up to everyone. Okay, the new people who, are just join, who just joined us, uh, Mr. Awudi A today. Thank you so much for watching. Mr. Edward Ikediashi. Thank you so much. Yeye Shewa Alex Pasmak. Thank you so much. I love that name, the surname Pasmak. Pasmak. Sound like Primark. And uh, Oye Lomo Ajoke Johnson, thank you so much. Mary Adeyeye, oh, one of my doctors is called Adeyeye. Trust me, I don't know if you are related. I also know Shola Adeyeye. Um, Alero King, thanks so much for joining us. Miss mm -hmm. Finance, thank you so much. And uh, where did Liz go? I don't know if I start mentioning everyone one by one. I'll be here till. Thy kingdom come. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, from me, DJ Ali, journalist, aka Omayala Durani Mangoro, aka African Boy with Charisma, aka Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, aka Tea Without Sugar, aka Ali at the Angel. It's good, man. And have a lovely Sunday. Keep it locked. We're switching to tuning live now. We're going to have lots of programs and also more music on tuning, so switch to tuning radio, just search for AYO Radio, that station with charisma, and like us and follow us. Thank you very much. God bless you.